Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Bobby and you're watching Mind Island Design. Today I'm going to show you how you can easily create a double exposure effect in Photoshop. Let's begin by creating a selection of our subject and you can do this a few ways. You can use the quick selection tool or at the top you can select select subject or under our properties panel you can select remove background. Now as you can see Photoshop created a mask for us and if we want to make any adjustments all we have to do is select the mask and we can play around with the feather or density. Once you're happy just select your mask while holding command or control so you can see the marching ants around it and then select your image and then hit command or control and J to create a new layer with just your isolated image and then you can just delete your second layer. And now if you need more space around your subject to create the effect you could just use the crop tool to create more negative space. Now let's just create a solid color under our adjustments layer and we'll leave that as white and drag this layer to the back so now we have a background color. And now let's just select our subject, go to image, adjustments and desaturate. Now let's just import our background image and decrease the opacity so we can see through it and using the rotate tool we can line up our background to our subject. Once you're happy, you can increase the opacity back to 100% and let's just select our subject layer with command or control so we get the marching ants effect again and then select our new background layer and then create a layer mask. Now let's just duplicate our subject by holding options or alt and dragging it to the top of our layers and then we'll change the blending mode to lighten and decrease the opacity to somewhere around 50%. Now let's select our new layer and create a layer mask and make sure our black brush is selected and let's just decrease the opacity so the transition is more smooth. Now with our layer mask selected we can start painting over our subject and removing parts we don't want. And same with our background layer mask, we can start removing some of the flames from the firefighter. Now let's just duplicate our background layer and we can hide this layer for now, we'll come back to it. But I want to adjust the, the lightness and the contrast of my background and the subject by going to my adjustments and choosing curves. And then just going between in the layers, the, the curves and my background layer and holding alt or option, you can make sure that the curves only affects the bottom layer that's below it. So now I'll just start tweaking these knobs, paying attention to my shadows and my highlights, trying to make my subject and my background feel like it's in the same environment. And I'll do the exact same thing with my original subject layer. We can add a background color by selecting our solid color and either sampling a color from our image or we can select our background and use our eyedropper tool to sample a color and let's just copy that hex code and then we can also paste that inside the solid color as well. We can now re-enable the background copy we made and just delete this layer mask and change the blending mode to lighten. And then we'll just make a new layer mask while holding options or alt to make an inverted mask. And we'll want to make sure our brush is white and you can switch between white or black with the X key. And then we can paint in some more of this cool flame effect. I'm going to make my background color white again and then desaturate the flames the same way I desaturated my subject or you can also hold command or control shift and U to desaturate. Mm -hmm. 
Now all that's left to do is go between our layer masks and our curves and make the fine adjustments we need until we're happy with the final product. Let's add some color by creating a new solid color and we can make this color whatever we want because we will be changing the blending mode to multiply. And then we can also just change the opacity to our liking so it's not super red. On Mac I'm going to hold command option shift and E to create a visible stamp layer that will just create a new layer with every visible layer and then go to image adjustments and desaturate and change the blending mode to lighten so this can bring out some of the highlights in our image. A quick tip to paint in some color into our black and white image is to create a new layer and make the blending mode color burn. So now we can choose any color we want and I'll choose like a, an orangey red for the flames. And that is how you can easily create a double exposure effect in Photoshop. If you had any issues, make sure to leave a comment below. And if this video helped, don't forget to hit subscribe and follow us on all of our social media to stay connected and never miss a new tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.